The threat of nuclear annihilation seems to be growing at a rather worrying rate. So, what would the detonation of a nuclear warhead on home and or foreign soil mean for you directly? If you're at the epicenter of the blast, then your concerns will be over within a matter of seconds. But what about those left behind? What about the fallout, both immediately and indirectly? If the targeted world power retaliates with a second nuclear missile and so on, how many launches and subsequent explosions will it take before the world as we know it is over? Join us as we explore the concept of a nuclear winter and what it would take for it to actually happen. I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. This video is sponsored by Conflict of Nations. In a world consumed by nuclear winter, civilization has fallen into desolation. Conflict of Nations is a free, real-time military strategy game where you play against up to 125 different people on the global map. Choose your nation, research and build your infantry and army, set up coalitions with other nations, and get ready for conflict. Once you've upped your ranking, you can enter the Season of Desolation and battle the insurgent forces in a nuclear winter landscape. Nations clash over the few remaining resources. To rebuild, control of research facilities is everything. Capture these sites and dictate the future of humanity. Download the game on mobile and PC by clicking on my link in the description and grab yourself our exclusive free starter pack gift of 13,000 gold credits and one month premium subscription, only available for the next 30 days. But before you enter the apocalyptic world of Conflict of Nations, we'll discover the true implications of a nuclear war and subsequent nuclear winter. In August of 1945, the two most destructive weapons to ever be used were dropped on foreign soil. Atomic Bomb's Little Boy and Fat Man killed hundreds of thousands of people in mere moments. An act of warfare that is credited with ending World War II, a global conflict that had ultimately become the deadliest in human history. Since then, however, the number of deaths has consistently decreased significantly and a lot of researchers believe that our current age is amongst the most peaceful in the history of our entire species. This lengthy harmony, sometimes known as the Long Peace, has been attributed to a wide variety of factors, ranging from the effects of globalization and increased trade to international peacekeeping efforts and the reduction of poverty. However, another possible reason is that of mutual assured destruction. The idea that the sheer amount of nuclear weapons held by so many different countries around the world ensures that none are incentivized to use them, as doing so would almost certainly guarantee an equally catastrophic retaliation. While some credit to this somewhat counterintuitive doctrine with our current state of peace, the extreme number of extremely powerful nuclear weapons that exist in the world has a lot of other people concerned. Really concerned. Despite the number of war deaths having fallen by about 95% through to 2016, the rate of actual conflicts has been steadily rising. If these more regionalized tensions do escalate into international conflicts and nuclear war did come to pass, it's possible that in addition to the destruction caused by the initial blast or blasts and subsequent radiation, the aftermath could also produce a so-called nuclear winter, which could range in severity from bad to really, really, really bad. You see, when nuclear bombs are detonated, they don't just obliterate everything in the blast radius. With a sufficiently powerful nuclear explosion, the force of the blast is enough to blow huge amounts of earth, dust, smoke, ash, and other debris into the air. And we do mean huge amounts. We're talking over a million tons of dust per explosion. Nuclear explosions can also result in firestorms, which are fires so large and hot that they literally generate their own wind systems. If fires are sufficiently intense and widespread, the large amount of hot air rising upwards sucks in air from the surrounding region, supplying greater oxygen to the conflagration and sustaining it for longer. Firestorms create enormous amounts of soot and ash in the order of several million tons. 
As the smoke plumes cool in the upper troposphere and lower stratosphere, a pyrocumulus or pyrocumulonimbus cloud forms, blocking out the sun and can turn daylight into darkness. While not all detonations cause firestorms, they easily can under the right conditions. In fact, this image is often incorrectly identified as the mushroom cloud over Hiroshima, but is instead a photo of the pyrocumulus cloud that developed from the three kilometer wide firestorm, which formed around 20 minutes after the detonation of Little Boy. Depending on the circumstances, this is where nuclear winter can develop. If enough of this airborne detritus is lofted into the stratosphere, it could stay there for weeks, months, or even years before fully clearing, spreading over huge areas of the globe and all the while blocking out the sun's light and warmth. This would have a wide range of truly disastrous knock-on effects for all of humanity, even people living far away from the explosion itself. Areas that fall under this enormous cloud would quickly become darker and colder, possibly dropping in temperatures by several degrees, as much as 20 degrees Celsius in certain regions. Not only could this make large areas far less hospitable generally, the drop in light and temperature would devastate crops and plant life, leaving enormous amounts of people vulnerable to malnutrition, starvation and disease. In parts of the world that are far more sensitive to temperature changes and the cold, such as warm areas like the tropics, the effects would be much more pronounced. All of this would also affect animals, both livestock and wildlife. The destruction of agriculture would naturally disrupt food supplies, possibly causing malnutrition and starvation, while the loss of certain ecologically important species could cause the food chain to collapse, either in part or entirely, creating an untold ecological disaster. Additionally, the cloud of smog and ash hanging in the atmosphere many kilometers up could trap a lot of other smoke, dust and ash down at the surface level, creating a hazardous toxic smog. Nuclear winter is similar in concept to volcanic winter, caused by volcanic eruptions, and impact winter, caused by large asteroid or comet impacts. All of these scenarios basically involve large amounts of dust, soot, ash, or other harmful substances entering the atmosphere, which then blocks out the sunlight and warmth, leading to reduced temperatures across large areas of the world. A famous example is the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, the most powerful volcanic eruption in recorded history. The eruption launched so much ash into the Earth's atmosphere that it lowered global temperatures, causing harvest failures and food shortages the following year, particularly in Europe and North America. As a result, 1816 came to be known as the Year Without a Summer, and led to a global death toll in the region of 1 to 200,000. The atom age is here. Initial concerns about the atmospheric effects of nuclear war date back as early as the invention of the atomic bomb. But more foreboding predictions, and indeed the term nuclear winter itself, were first published in 1983 by a research group headed by well-known American scientist Carl Sagan. This group eventually became known as TTAPS, using the initials of the five scientists involved. But this was during the Cold War, when tensions were at their most fraught. We have proposed four major points as an agenda for peace. We urge the Soviet Union today to join with us in this quest. We must act not for ourselves alone, but for all mankind. The situation is much less serious now, right? Today, there are over 12,000 nuclear weapons in existence, the vast majority of which are split between Uncle Sam and the Red Bear. While there are far less now than there were at the height of the Cold War in the 70s and 80s, when the key players amassed stockpiles of many tens of thousands of nuclear warheads, the number today is still far, far more than the relative handful that the US possessed in the years after the end of World War II. Additionally, many other countries have since obtained their own nuclear arsenal, 
You should also probably be aware that today's generation of nuclear weapons are even more devastatingly powerful than those used in 1945. Upon detonation, the Little Boy and Fat Man bombs respectively exploded with roughly 15 to 21 kilotons of energy, known as their yields. Each was enough to almost completely destroy two entire cities. Today, the most powerful nuclear weapon currently in active service is the B-83 nuclear bomb, which has an explosive power of 1.2 megatons, more than 57 times more powerful than Fat Man, and a full 80 times more powerful than Little Boy. And this isn't even close to the most powerful nuclear device ever created, which was the 1961 Tsar bomber test, which exploded with an incredible force of over 50 megatons, making it many thousand times more powerful than either of the bombs used at the end of the Second World War. Terrifyingly, the Tsar bomber could have been twice as powerful, with a yield in excess of 100 megatons, had it included an optional layer of uranium-238, called a tamper. This added layer, a common feature of many modern nuclear weapons, massively boosts the weapon's yield but was omitted from the Tsar bomber test to minimize radioactive fallout. With all this in mind, many people believe the risk nuclear warheads pose to humanity is far greater than we might like to think. Beyond the unimaginable destruction the nuclear explosives can unleash in just a few moments, the long-term effects of just one of these very powerful modern nuclear bombs, let alone many, can be disastrous. So, given all that, exactly how many nukes would be needed to cause a nuclear winter? Well, unsurprisingly, that depends. For a nuclear winter to happen, the blasts need to blow tremendous quantities of ash, smoke, dust, and soot into the air, which almost necessarily requires the development of firestorms. Nuclear explosions targeting cities, or especially industrial facilities like factories or oil refineries that contain large amounts of combustible material, are the most likely to cause a nuclear winter. All the smoke and soot also needs to be blown high into the atmosphere. As almost all forms of weather occur in the troposphere, the lowest level of the atmosphere, airborne detritus, at these heights is often precipitated or rained out fairly quickly. Most modern nuclear detonations would be air bursts, exploding around one kilometer above its target. The reason for this is to create the optimal overpressure and a more forceful shockwave. Dust and soot from these more powerful explosions that make it into the upper troposphere and lower stratosphere will reach the jet streams and then be spread out across a wider area. The heat of the sun can also lift the cloud particles even further upwards, allowing them to remain there uninterrupted for far, far longer. The early modeling of the nuclear winter theory is said to have helped to end the nuclear arms race in the 1980s. But in the subsequent decades, many have questioned how real the threat of nuclear winter actually is. The overwhelming majority of experts, however, agree that all-out nuclear war would induce a nuclear winter. But scenarios involving just a single nuclear submarine could have devastating effects across the globe. Back in 2008, Dr. Philip Weber claimed that the firepower of just one of the UK's nuclear submarines, capable of carrying 60 missiles with a total of 48 nuclear warheads, each one with a yield of 100 kilotons, could inject enough soot into the atmosphere to lower the global temperature by between 1.5 and 3 degrees Celsius over at least five years. In practice, this could lead to millions of additional casualties due to crop failures and food shortages. Additionally, a landmark report published in 2022 by International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War found that even a limited nuclear war would cause abrupt climate disruption and global starvation. The resulting famines and the collapse of public order could cause the deaths of hundreds of millions, perhaps even billions.
In 2023, one of the most chillingly scientifically accurate simulations was composed by multiple institutes using unclassified data. The simulation demonstrates the events that would take place in all-out nuclear war. Due to early detection systems, when one side launches missiles, the other will retaliate by firing before the first warhead even reaches its target, meaning within minutes we'd have multiple nuclear weapons in the air before a single one had actually been detonated. Within a matter of hours, a quarter of the world's nuclear arsenal would have been launched. The black carbon smoke caused by the firestorms of 3,651 nuclear detonations would lead to a nuclear winter. Once the plumes of smoke reached the stratosphere, the high-altitude jet streams would quickly spread them across the globe. Within two weeks, the northern hemisphere would be covered, and by day 100, nearly the entire Earth would be blacked out by this thick smog. This would cause temperatures below to plummet, leading to a loss of around 60% of the global population. It's estimated that a nuclear winter resulting from this type of warfare could last up to a decade. Worse still, another simulation based on modern sophisticated climate modeling demonstrates the effect of one of the largest possible nuclear exchanges, in which two parties use 4,400 nuclear weapons, each with a yield of 100 kilotons. In this simulation, 150 million metric tons of soot would be launched into the upper troposphere and lower stratosphere, causing temperatures on land to plummet by around 20 degrees, and causing the ocean to cool rapidly. For context, at the peak of the actual ice age 20,000 years ago, temperatures were around 5 or 6 degrees cooler than they are today. In this scenario, sea ice would permanently expand into populated coastal areas, and ocean marine life would be decimated. The following two summers would look like this. After a decade or more, the smoke would clear and half of the cooling effect would be gone while recovery would take hundreds of years. But the planet is expected not to return to its pre-war state. Instead, we'd be left in what's been dubbed a nuclear little ice age, whereby regions of the planet would remain colder for a thousand years or more. The last Little Ice Age was a period of cooling that lasted around 500 years and began sometime near the 13th century. While a precise cause of this climatic shift is heavily debated, triggers likely included changes in solar activity, as well as a series of volcanic eruptions starting with Samalus in 1257. While this is probably the worst case scenario for nuclear war, simulations have also produced similar results for a limited conflict. This scenario involves up to 250 nuclear detonations, with kilotonnage ranging from 15 to 100. And by comparison, this more regional conflict is projected to loft only a fraction of black carbon smoke into the stratosphere, but it would still induce a nuclear winter, blocking out up to 35% of sunlight, causing temperatures to cool by up to 5 degrees Celsius, with a temporary expansion of sea ice. Although the initial recovery would be expected to take a decade, the Earth could again be left in a state of nuclear little ice age, lasting hundreds of years. While these sorts of simulations are harrowing, it's important to point out what wouldn't occur as a result of nuclear war. Humanity is unlikely to become extinct, with pockets of refuge remaining around the globe. The Earth would not be plunged into an actual ice age, as that change in landscape takes thousands of years. And while these are the most accurate projections the scientific community can currently produce, there's so much data that is classified. So, in a real-world nuclear war, the actual humanitarian impact could be better. Or it could be worse. See how your military strategy would fare to avoid or induce nuclear war by downloading Conflict of Nations for free and get your exclusive gift of 13,000 gold reward and one month premium membership, available for the next 30 days. Click on my link in the description, choose your country and fight your way to victory. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.